why did I move outside the United States and what keeps me happy there? I was interviewed by Florian, a friend, fellow creator, and German living in Canada, and I talk all about my reasons in this video. If you agree or disagree or just want to continue talking about it, let's do that in the comment section below. Find links to the rest of the interview either on the end screen or in the description box. Thank you for watching. So how is it going? It's going great, man. It's good to see you. Like I said, you're looking good, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Good to see you. Canada is treating you well, it seems. Yeah, pretty well. Like, I good feel like I'm, I'm, I'm living my life on a highway on high speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm really? High speedy? Yeah. I'm, so things I'm, are I'm a little bit faster there, huh? No, but, but my life, my life feels like I'm on, on high speed because I, I'm experiencing so many things in such a short period of time. I feel like I'm making lots of progress in okay. just a short period of time. I get it. I get it. But you're <laughs> loving it. Yeah, I love it. So, yeah. shall we get started? Yeah, we can get started. So I've prepared some questions for you. Um, okay. And however you feel like answering or uh, going off, off topic from there is all fine so sure let's go from there okay so my first question i have for you is uh can you please introduce yourself and tell us uh when and where you moved first off i know it's been quite some time since we last spoke um before a couple of days ago that is um so i, I do want to say it's good to speak and work with you again and uh thank you for having me so thank you for, for being my name here. is uh Oh, absolutely. My name is Christopher Russell. Uh, I'm a content creator originally from the U.S., um, but since about 2016, uh, I've been based out of Germany. I spent about three years living here prior to 2016 uh, as a U.S. Mil military member. Uh, so I'm totaling almost 10 years now living in Germany. My content is there's been a recent shift, uh, but it's basically just uh, me doing videos and uh, short films and things like that that I love and are and am passionate about. And up until about three, four months ago, it's been basically uh, me displaying and showing my experiences uh, as an expat and living as an American in Germany. My channel's out there. Christopher Russell is the name of it. And I'm a content creator. Yeah, so go check it out. <laughs> yeah. So why did you move to Germany? What was the main reason? Why did I move to Germany? Reasons, reasons. Am I right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. No, actually, uh, short. the short answer to this question, one that encompasses every individual reason is ease of lifestyle. That's that's the short answer. Typically, I could carry on and on and on with my reasons. And um, I started saving people time by just saying ease of lifestyle because that covers everything. But if I had to start breaking down um, some of the individual things, I would say uh, slower pace of life. While in the U.S., I basically worked so much and so hard that I felt like life was happening around me and I was basically missing it. So slower pace of life, simpler concepts um, from smaller things such as the Fond program, Rolladens even, to amazing public transportation, uh, Ruhrzeit, which is basically quiet hours, more or less enforced on Sundays and like um, later evenings during the week. You should know something about that. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, simpler concepts, slower pace of life. And also one of the things is integrity and honor. Now, Okay. This could this could be this is this could vary depending on who you're talking to. But for me, and I'm writing a video on this as we speak, but some might see this as petty or reaching. But when I noticed how something like those candy vaults, you know, those little candy vaults that sit on the side of the sidewalk with the candies yeah. in it, you put the yeah, coin yeah. in it, you can get either a, to a toy or candy, something like that, or maybe even like the, the sidewalk cigarette machines. When I notice that those things can just live here and nobody vandalizes them or steals them or destroys them, it's the li that little bit of honor and integrity that carries a long way when it comes to me. Not only that, though, train rides. Pretty much, you they trust that you'll buy a ticket whether someone will be there to verify it or not. They trust that you'll get a ticket. Uh, they trust that everybody understands that doing the right thing only increases the benefits and makes things better for everyone. Realistically, 85 to 90 percent of the time, no one ever asks me to present my ticket on the train. I have it, but that's just my experience. No one ever really, yeah, really yeah. Uh, comes to check. I've never seen anyone get busted for not having one. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but I've never seen it. The point I'm making is it's that honor system and that 
just that integrity in the society itself that drew me in, you know, especially in the city that I grew up in, though, if if you ever put something uh, that can be removed on the sidewalk, it's going to be removed. <laughs> Someone's going to try and test it and take it away. So those th those just those few things. And I know people might consider consider those trivial, but just those few things was enough to to open my eyes to move into to permanently move into a new country yeah even if it's little things they add up absolutely did your expectation meet the reality or was there a discrepancy or, or something that you didn't expect um i i think i think it's lived up to reality i don't think um i haven't seen anything thus far that um would change how i first Uh, experienced it. Obviously, living here longer, you do start to see more things as you become more comfortable. Yeah. Like my eyes aren't shooting around wondering like, oh my gosh, everything's so new anymore. Now I can yeah, take my sure. time and, and gather more things, you know, now that I'm so integrated, like I said, almost 10 years now. So yes, I pick up on uh, certain smaller things that I didn't see before, but it doesn't reverse what I felt initially about uh, honor and integrity. In the, in the country. Sounds good. How, how was life in, on, and your experience in the first few days when you moved? To be honest, the first few days here are kind of a blur. <laughs> I mean, because it was just, like I said, just a second ago, it's like I, there was so much to see. It was just like there was so much overstimulation that my mind didn't have much time to process many things, you know? Um, yeah, in the beginning, everything the, is new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just everything being new, like so many things to, to gather. I do remember a few things. So frontal nudity in some of the advertisement <laughs> advertisements in public that's died down a little bit. Um, but just like I said, eight, nine, 10 years ago, I would see it all the time on TV. I could see uh, advertisements out in the public on 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 signs and stuff like that. Full frontal nudity. So it was, it was just kind of strange to me to see that in the States. You know, they're a little more weird about that kind of thing. Another thing, see, seeing nearly everyone, from my perspective, seeing nearly everyone smoking, that was <laughs> another really like astonishing, shocking thing that I saw. For me, I thought every, I thought the idea was to not smoke so much, you know, to get people to not be smoking as much. Yeah. But upon coming here, I just seen so many people, young and old, just taking to cigarettes. It was actually um, something that surprised me about Canada because I didn't expect to be there that, that there's any difference between Germany or Europe and North America. But apparently uh -huh. the United States and Canada smoking is not a thing. Not many people smoke here. A little less, yeah. Let's see, another thing, having <laughs> having some t having teens sell me my beer. Older teens, but having teens selling my beer, that just seemed odd that the young person uh, cashing me out with my beer was just not even of age, the of age that I was familiar with. Of course, it's different in Germany, but the of age, which is 21, that I was familiar with, it just seemed weird that they were selling me my beer. Again, trivial things, but you know, if I had to name a few things that I can attribute to the first few days of experience, it's those little things. Can you think of the greatest challenge you had when moving here, uh, when moving to Germany? Greatest challenge. To me, the greatest challenges were the language barrier first off, which is probably by far the toughest thing to deal with, I guess, for me. Uh, to this day, I still struggle hard. <laughs> And I am extremely grateful to the uh, for the patience that most people have with me. They surely don't have to have it. I guess another challenge is uh, adjusting to not having many uh, options for conveniences. As I mentioned earlier, I, I worked a lot when I was in the States and mostly on night shift. So I grew used to being able to like buy food, for example, at three in the morning if I needed to, right? Mm. Or if I needed an accessory or a tool or something, uh, electronic, um, a haircut even, I was used to just the abundance of accessibility. If you don't live near like uh, a truck stop here or something like that, and most people don't, then don't expect to buy anything after like 2100, nine o'clock at night. <laughs> if you need specific things, prepare to go directly to where those specific things will only be, meaning there ain't no There ain't many all-in-one stores like a Super Target or a Super Walmart. There ain't many stores like that here, right? So that's that's another challenge, just uh, the abundance that I was used to dwindling down a little bit. Uh, the last challenge, I would say, was getting used to not being constantly 
on the go. Boom, 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 go, go, go. For a while, I literally felt like I, I wasn't doing something maybe I was supposed to be doing when I was living here. I, I just felt like I wasn't doing something because life had slowed down just that much. The days were slow most times, uh, quiet. Um, they went by and I wasn't stressed or completely exhausted. Uh, in the beginning, it just felt off a little bit for things to be so slow. I'd say those were the most challenging things for me. Okay. Uh, how hard was it to make a living in the beginning? And how is it now? Making a living. If I count the beginning, you said the beginning. If I count yeah. the beginning as when I was here serving in the military, then making a living wasn't a problem at all. The U.S. military provided me everything I could need. Um, I didn't have to worry about my legal stay, finances, housing, transportation, employment, insurance, schooling for my two daughters, or much of really anything, to be honest. It was more or less handed to me. But if I count the beginning as when I came here not as a U.S. military member, then that'd be a little bit different. <laughs> Finding my way to make a living was a bit different in that regard. Uh, and it was all up to me at that point. It was all up to me. I didn't have anybody to go to or lean on at that point. And although I made it happen, it required way more of my active participation. Like I, I had to be active and, and uh, aggressive with things at times. You know, I, I had to, to, to get out there and actually pursue things. If I didn't, then slowly things would start to fall by the wayside and I'd be back in the States. Uh, but I got it done. And I would say that it's easier for me to make a living here now since I know way more than I did then, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And it can be hard uh, going to a different culture, a different country, trying to figure out how to make a living. But it can also be easier depending on what your own mindset and your own culture is in the place you are in or mm -hmm. not. That's why I'm asking uh, how hard was it to make a living? It just depends on the person and the mm -hmm. uh, the country you are in. Absolutely. It also plays into like dealing with the culture, uh, with differences yeah. in culture. Uh, yeah. How did you get used to the culture in, in Germany? The main thing I would say helped me get used to the culture was being open-minded. Uh, that's yeah, that sure that's a big one. Now, although this could be partly because of my personality itself, I do think that if someone wants something bad enough, they will actively practice to learn to reduce their defenses and open their mind up to new things, basically. It has to be understood that most people are going to be uncomfortable in a new in a new culture. Like expect that. Not every transition will be seamless. Not every adjustment will be painless. You likely will struggle somewhere. And I was fortunate enough to grasp that concept early on. That for sure helped me to get used to this new culture. Just staying open-minded. Did you experience any culture shock? I guess I did. I mean, I guess everybody does, you know, kind of like what I was just saying, there's there's obviously going to be some, but if I yeah, had something any- Something that, that strikes you, oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had any, they weren't hard to overcome for, for me. I overcame a lot of the stuff that was new to me and different to me just by talking about them. I would bring things up to my coworkers or family and we chop it up with each other and you know, you'd be surprised that after getting something out there and not holding on to it and misunderstanding all to yourself, how much that frees up your mind and just opens you up to other things. Once you grab a hold of something and understand it a little bit better, you don't fear it or you don't sweat it as much. And yeah. I guess I overcame these things eventually by just finding a way to talk about it. If I couldn't do that, then I make content. <laughs> <laughs> make content about it <laughs> one way or another I, I had to talk about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, do you have any tips on making friends in a new country no no that's pretty hard <laughs> <laughs> no it's uh, it, th oh man that's a tricky one it really is as you as you should know after all you spoke on this in your video I don't know if you remember <laughs> yeah, the I video did. that I reacted to but befriending the Germans is sort of a task all right and I don't mean this in a rude way, but it's it's sort of a task. Firstly, nine times out of 10, the Germans will not be the ones to initiate any kind of friendship or, you know, opening up in that way. If they don't already know you from like childhood, they likely won't be the ones to initiate with you, with, with you, with the foreigner, the expat. 
That makes it difficult because after all, in situations like that, you, meaning the foreigner, the expat, are the visitor. So you're already apprehensive about everything in the new in this whole new land. You're already overburdened with figuring out so many things. And now you have to be the one to say, hi, my name is too. It's just, I don't know, it could be, it could be overburdening at times. Uh, most of my friends have come in the form of other foreigners or short-term visitors, maybe, where most just end up leaving again. You know, that's, that's been my situation, unfortunately. Uh, the reason behind having so, uh, so many foreigner friends is it just, for me, it, for a while, it just became easier to deal with. It was it was it was easier acquiring friends that could relate to me and actually knew what I was going through and, you know, having the same exact things we can talk about that made it a little bit easier to have acquaintances. Yeah. But like I said, unfortunately, most of them just end up moving away, uh, whether it be like uh, people who are here from the U.S. and are serving in the military currently, they got to go, whether it be people who um, moved here without the military and decided to take the chance that I took. Some of them can't hack it, they go away. And some people just move away because they don't like the area. They wanna try their hand in, in some other place. Um, but unfortunately, most of my friends come in that, had come in that form. I may not be the best source for, of info for <laughs> actually making friends with the Germans, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I just I don't have that many. I've heard this comparison somewhere uh, that Germans are like coconuts and Americans are like peaches. The peaches are soft from the outside. It's 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 nice and squishy, easy to get to know, but they have a hard inside. It's it's really hard to get to the core. And drums yeah. are the other way around. They have a hard outside. It's really hard to break the shell. But once it's broken, it's all soft and nice inside and friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that, but that's so fitting. <laughs> that fits perfectly. I gotta be honest. <laughs> it's just wow. Yeah, now I gotta keep use on trying to get that outer shell broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, and it's a tough one. I'll tell you. Man, yeah, I can't it's a tough shell. <laughs> but I know firsthand experience, even growing up, it's it's not that easy unless mm -hmm. you interact on a daily basis. That's basically the easiest Absolutely. way to make friends, interacting on a frequent basis with people. That's how I learned people like here, it's easier in Canada because uh, they, are, they don't have the hard shell from the outside. Yeah. But it's easy to make friends if you have a workplace to go to and just talk to work colleagues and get to know them and then get Absolutely. to know people through the people at work because they meet up and they bring some more people and stuff like that fortunate for you you don't really have a language barrier yeah that's <laughs> I've, I've learned english from fourth grade on that's that's, that's, that's a big a, one that, I that's imagine. a positive that i've always that i've always looked at germany as you know thumbs up for doing that because my girls are on their third language now through the german school so it's a good thing yeah, language can be a hard barrier do you ever feel homesick especially with uh <laughs> the behavior of how, how hard it is to get to know new Germans? Very often at first, being away from family was tough. I dealt with it by just staying in contact as much as I could. I mean, what else are you gonna do? I've gotten better about it. Uh, I used to think that I needed to visit the US like every year or two. That's, you know, in the beginning, it's just like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be back home next year. Or I'll go back next year. Like I needed to get some sort of, you know, comfort fix or something. But I got over that pretty quickly. Eventually, I was able to understand that this is actually home now. You know, this is my comfortable. When I went to the U.S. in 2020 and would refer to going back home, this right here in Germany is where my mind defaulted to. It wasn't where I grew up. It wasn't, you know, some other place in the States or anything like that. Not where I lived prior to moving here. Uh, but right here, when I said I was going home, this is where my mind went to. So any feeling of homesickness I felt in the beginning was U.S. based. Now, feeling homesick, if I ever have to, if I ever do, would definitely be for here. I, I always thought um, home is where I, where I hang my head. I always had yeah. this, this mindset. But living for uh, living abroad for a longer period of time makes me realize like there are things you miss. There are things that you would like to have where you yeah. live right now. But then you just have to imagine what what uh, what are the like how is it like like now? How how is your life now? And what are the benefits where where you are living now compared to the things you miss? And then I think of it's only the little things. Those little yeah. things are not the important part of my life. 
Like my, my entire life, my center of life is here. I have friends, I have a stable job. Like I'm, I'm happy where, where I am. And those little things, they are just nothing major. Yeah, that's how Same I overcome here. homesickness. Thinking about how important is that little tiny mm -hmm. piece that I miss. That's a that's a very good point, and and I it's you know I can relate directly to that as well. Um, when I stop to think about what exactly am I missing, it's never anything significant. You know, in most cases, like you said, it's the little things. It's just like in the scope of things, will I would I trade what I'm doing right now for that? And it's like no, yeah. I wouldn't. So. Yeah, you just we you you, ha, you just got to kind of weigh it, I suppose. Going back for any per, to any specific reason never outweighs being here for me. I even started writing them down, the the things I miss, and then I was uh -huh. thinking, could I find those things here where I am right now, or anywhere close here, like within a yeah. driving distance? And most of the things I I could actually find somewhere. It's just most of the things I had on my list were related to accessibility of big city stuff because i don't live in a, yeah. in a really big city right now mm -hmm. so that has nothing to do with oh i can only get that in my home country in germany but uh, it's, it's actually just related to where i live right now and yeah. the, the Real only quick, things what, that what we are, city are you in uh it's called it's pretty small it has uh, about twenty thousand people it's oh. uh four hours from vancouver oh. it's in the middle of the mountains it's beautiful yeah. here but it's, it's that's, not that's a big what city. you wanted right <laughs> yeah exactly what you wanted it's, yeah i agree yeah. with you man that's that's totally right um and that's a good way to look at things like that that actually helped me writing stuff down and then thinking about can i get that here somewhere in this country or somewhere that can drive within a short distance within a short time yeah. and then the list boiled down to only the a few items and those were the only things that i truly missed and then yeah. it isn't isn't that overwhelming of oh there are so many things that I can't have here. It's actually just Absolutely. a handful of things. Puts things into perspective. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You talked. We talked about friends. Uh, how's about a uh, um, uh, social network? Because you talked about your friends mostly were uh, all other experts or people visiting. Uh, I count this as network as well. Just networking, uh, getting to know people. Doesn't matter if it's from from your own country or uh, anywhere else. Did, did building a network change when you moved to a different country? This would sort of go back to the making friends question a little bit for me, uh, because my physical network here is <laughs> lackluster <laughs> at best. Uh, but my digital or online uh, social network is pretty substantial, I'd say. Sadly, the amount of people or friends or acquaintances I know online by far overshadow the amount of people I know in real life. I hate it or love it, this is how I've had to keep myself in the circles that I want to be in. Other creators, other social media business folks, even just folks with the same mindset that like to motivate and elevate others. I've had to surround myself by, with them somehow. I never saw Germany as a place that was big on that, and I was kind of right. Although there are lots of Germans out there that are doing uh, business online and, you know, whether it be gaming online or modeling or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm talking about? Instagram, yeah. YouTube, there are many. It's just not as widespread amongst the common people as it is in other places, India, the US. I found it hard to find like-minded people that think like me, understand uh, my, my purpose here with, with creating content and video and film. It's just tough to find people that are in that same space, that same mental space, unless I search online. Yeah. If you were to visit the town I live in or the surrounding town, you're pretty much not gonna find anybody that does this, that is into this. It's going to be rare. One or two people, maybe. And if not that, they'll be like super young, like kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, I've had to do what I had to do. If meeting new people in a foreign country is important to you, then I would say definitely don't be in a shell. You're going to have to be out a lot and um, maybe be full of initiative. Also, maybe have a thick skin because yeah. you know everything's not going to go your way and you're going to get a lot of uh, disappointments. So. I mean, it is what it is, man. Uh, my my experience definitely doesn't speak for everyone, but from what I've I've gathered, this is kind of how it is here, and that's how my social networking has been. It's mostly online. Mostly online. Yeah. Yeah. It depends what you're what you're looking for. If you if you want the physical interaction, uh, and there's no like like-minded people 
in your area about the specific niche you're looking for, it uh-huh. can be pretty hard. But yeah. if it's like just in general, you just have to put out, put yourself out there and mm-hmm. keep trying. Did uh, all the, the experiences you had in, in Germany, did it actually change your mindset and uh, how you treat life and work and your culture? It's definitely opened my eyes to um, all of those things, honestly. My concept of working has definitely shifted. No longer do I think it's the only thing that matters. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't wake up in the morning to hurry up and get to work so that I can, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. It's not, it's not the only thing that matters to me by far anymore. I'll never work so much that I miss the things that really make life worth living. I'll never go back to that. The ease of lifestyle that, that, that I mentioned earlier and the slower pace of everyday living have been enough to shift life itself into being more enjoyable for me. Life actually slowed, slowed down a bit for you and made it more, more enjoyable. Correct. Sounds good. <laughs> do, you, do you have any advice for new experts or people who want to move to a different country? The best advice I can give, try to never be discouraged. Or if you do get discouraged, don't rest there. Don't expect every single thing to go right in this process. It's a tough process. It's by no means meant to be one, two, three, easy done. Talk to other expats prior to making the move. Ask questions. Like be annoyingly curious, but don't get discouraged. Things will settle. The best piece of advice I can give you, just don't get discouraged. That's a good advice. Uh, Thank you. On, on, on that note, uh, do you have any advice on being successful in the new place you're in? Anything you should change in your behavior or things like that? I won't say be open-minded again, uh, but even though I want to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it requires a welcoming kind of mindset. So many things are, will come your way at once when doing this. So many things are just going to, you're just going to be bombarded with so many things all at once. Some things you'll love, some you won't, but you, you'll need to have some kind of welcoming mindset to all the things, right? There's no yeah. way you could close off yourself and just block out everything and think, you know, tunnel vision and just think you're going to get through. No, you have to be, op- you have to keep that welcoming mindset because you're going to get it no matter what. It's going to come at you no matter what. You also need to have a somewhat resilient mindset. For example, I know a few folks that just couldn't take, it's going to sound weird. I know folks that just couldn't take not having (laughs) Walmart. They couldn't take it. No Walmart. They couldn't take it. It was absolutely killing them. They completely abandoned their dreams to live in another country and went back to North America to their beloved Walmart. This is a true story. True story. These are real people. They just couldn't take it. So being not resilient or or pers- persistent enough to learn that that's not the only way led them to giving up. Mindset is definitely a factor when it comes to this thing. Yeah, I, I highly agree on that. You really have to be open minded uh, and accept the differences and maybe even embrace the differences. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I feel the same way. Um, I already asked pleasure. one of the questions I had for you, but I was curious uh, exactly where you had moved to. I don't remember. I don't know if you ever said <laughs> you probably didn't uh, before I asked that is. But yeah, you're just outside of Vancouver. That's pretty cool. I have I have some uh, some online friends uh, in that area. They're doing much bigger things than I am. So that's cool. You're in a good area. Yeah. What else do you like about there? Well, I'm, I'm here up four hours uh, uh, east of Vancouver. It's in the middle of the mountains, like in the middle of nature. Tons of mm-hmm. lakes here. Then the nature is just amazing, and because it is not the big city, the big city. It's not Vancouver. Mm-hmm. That's that's the nice part of it. Uh, it it's uh, just more slowed down. Exactly what you described with this, uh, the lifestyle in Germany, because yeah. big city life is always a hustle and bustle. But uh-huh. here it's more more relaxed and more slowed down, and it's more like about lake life <laughs> and mountain life, skiing and going going to the lake and swimming in summer or a kayaking, canoeing and stuff like that. People are just mm-hmm. very outdoorsy here. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Very nice. And how's your uh, how's your network, social network? Things working out there with that or? It, it's pretty limited to the area here. I haven't reached out to uh, any other places and it's pretty limited because it's a small, a small city where I live in. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I found some like-minded people, but most of them, as you said, is the same thing. They are also uh, foreigners to Canada, also immigrants. Uh, but the thing is, there are so many of them here. 
it doesn't even make a big difference uh, to talk yeah. about uh, where, where, where are you from? Are you first generation, second generation or third generation immigrant? Because everyone is an immigrant. <laughs> so Did I, you, didn't, um, I didn't even feel this this uh, this uh, this urge to to uh, like have real Canadian friends because everyone is treated. Uh, at least I feel like everyone's treated the same here. Hmm. I haven't experienced any any negative attitude towards the foreigners. I've That's read great. about tons of uh, racism still happening, but I've never experienced anything myself and I've never heard anyone talking about it in, in from the friends that I have here. Wow, that's great. That's Which good to hear. Nice. Yeah. It's good to hear that you didn't have to uh, put all that effort towards, you know, doing what you did only to see that, you know, wild things are happening there or crazy things are happening yeah. there. So that's good, man. That's good. I'm like from what I've learned, that. people are really open-minded here. They're really, really open-minded. <laughs> it's like it's refreshing. That's good. The, the only people that I encounter that are not that open-minded and stuck their way is older people, people who are mm. retired. But, ah. but I can I can respect that and I can accept that because they, they have lived their life and they know their yeah. ways and they they don't want to change <laughs> just Absolutely. for retirement age. Florian, do you ever miss Germany? I've just I just talked <laughs> for <laughs> I just talked all this time about it, um, and I'm pretty sure I was saying things that you can already relate to, or maybe maybe you thought I was wrong about something. Do you ever miss your home country? There are certain things I miss. I mentioned I made a list of things that that I do miss to figure out what exactly is it. Is it something that I miss because I I lived in I, I live in a in a smaller place now and not in a big city. That's where I mm-hmm. lived in. I lived in Frankfurt in Germany. That's bigger than the place I live in now. And it all boiled down to just small things like uh, having access to public transit, even in smaller places. Because even in Germany, you, can, you have public transit in, in small villages. You can go yeah. wherever you want to without a car. There is no need for a car. But mm-hmm. here, everything is car based. You need a car to get anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's yeah, things I'm, I'm, I miss, just just being able to go somewhere without the need of a car. And everything is so far away. That's also something that I miss from Germany. You can just go somewhere in a short period of time. And here, like, you're know, driving six hours and you're still not there. <laughs> and for the locals, wow. it's, oh, it's just the next city. Oh, it's just, that's so close. <laughs> They're used to it, it, huh? Everything is far away. The, the, the proximity to everything, that's something I miss. But that's not just Germany, that's Europe in general. Everything is close yeah. in Europe. Would you ever come back? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I, I've only lived here for one and a half years now. And Is your family still here? Right. My, yeah, my, my mom, my dad, my all my aunts and uncles, like basically the entire family is in Germany. Okay. I will visit them. I will come and visit. But I'm not sure if I would ever move back. I can imagine myself living in Germany because that's where I grew up. That's what I'm familiar with. But I've experienced how friendly and how, how nice it is here and how much nature there is to explore. Like both countries have their ups and downs. I, I honestly could imagine myself living in Germany. But okay. I don't think I want to. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. Because have I, have more, gone, I have more benefits here than I, I feel like I would have in Germany. Nice. Are, are you? Is, is your stay there based on your job? Uh, no, I have a permanent residency visa. It's, oh, it's wow. permanent. Nice. That was quick. So even if I switched, to, if I were to to switch jobs or lose my job or whatever, my my visa is not dependent on that. Wow. That's the nice thing. That's pretty quick, man. Look at yeah. you go. <laughs> That's nice. Have you gone? Yeah, uh, it has this nice program. Like uh, if. It's becoming more and more difficult, but it's it's based on your skills. And uh, yeah. once you reach a certain threshold of, they, they assign you points. Once you oh. reach a certain threshold with points, you can apply for that visa without a job offer. But a job offer would you get it would get you an insane amount of points, so you you're in, basically, if if you have that job offer that requires it requires certain skills. But if you if you reach that threshold without the job offer, then it's not dependent on your job, and it's not dependent on an actual job you're performing in in Canada. Um, I don't know. I don't know how it's like in Germany with visas because honestly, I've never looked into that because I lived in that country. Yeah. I've only heard stories from others, but it's, I don't it's know a it's a little is. different. I don't I don't um, it's it's not coming to my head if there's some kind of point system right now at the moment. But 
it's a it's a little bit different but i wanted to ask you one more thing have you have you gone down to the states um not while i was here i've been to the states before but n not since i moved to canada not since you moved there okay yeah i've just been busy exploring canada and where i live here i i'm i'm planning on making trips because there's so much to explore in the states yeah i just haven't had the chance yet Very but good. the border is not that far away i think it's four hours driving from here to the border or three hours yeah. Yeah, i think three hours that's that's not that far at all like your friends were saying oh just the next town over just a few hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> florian have, thank I, you I, for having me man yeah thanks it's, thanks for being it's here been very for, nice for, for, for making it work i even looked back at the um at your video this time before this um and i noticed something and i i, I this is this is this is an amazing thing to me at you know <laughs> creator wise you did the video in both english and german yeah i started doing that for the first video and then but I stopped. <laughs> it's not dubbed it's not dubbed yeah, it, you redid the whole video to match the german one or the english yeah one. i basically i wrote my script in english then i translated it to german and i recorded everything twice yeah so i know <laughs> i was like wow i didn't know you did it twice but when i watched the other one i think youtube suggested it to me actually not long ago <laughs> actually probably a few months ago and i stopped like oh that's it i remember watching this i watch it again and i pressed play and it was in deutsch i was like <laughs> that's not how i remember this but it was so bad i was so thrown off because everything was the same <laughs> the walk you did your actions everything you did exactly the same it was a lot of effort like shooting that looks like a lot of effort fight. man and i can surely applaud and appreciate that <laughs> i was like ah wow this guy was on to something but that was cool man i just wanted to give you props for that man that was that's that was awesome i i, I thought i can pull it through and, and i i can just continue doing it but i only did it for my first video and then i mm -hmm. i just stopped because it was so much effort it's a lot of work it was, isn't it <laughs> yeah people don't see that they don't see that part yeah, See, I watch both videos and it's easy for me to be like, oh, that's cool. But as a creator, I know, I know it took some effort. I know there was especially some Especially if a video is just like five or 10 minutes, people only see that for five or 10 minutes and they don't see how much, how much effort went into, into that. Exactly. Cause I, you know, I, I, even some parts I was just like, oh, he had to redo that. Like, I know he read that, redid that a couple of times because it <laughs> mat, they, the videos match. I'm good job, man. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Very good job. I was thinking of starting videos in German again, uh, in mm -hmm. parallel to my, my English channel, but it's just so much work and I'm struggling with making videos on my English channel already. It's like I haven't uploaded yeah. in over a year until I started uploading again. Uh, for now, I'm just focusing on English videos and that's my German channel is still a thing for the future. Because I yeah. think there are more things to explore and just share the differences between the cultures on my German channel for the German uh -huh. audience. And the English channel is going to be focusing on, on different topics. Okay. I think that's what I'm going going with long term. Yeah. Um, I mean, but as you said in the meeting the other day, it's this is more, your YouTube is more or less just a hobby, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just for fun because I'm, I'm not making any money from this and I'm not expecting to make any money in the in the future in the near future if i do it's it's a nice thing but i enjoy doing it i enjoy making <laughs> videos i enjoy re-watching my videos to see what Same. did i think in the part because I'm, I'm sharing my opinion about things even like controversial things like <laughs> when, yeah. when i bash germany all the time in my video that's like pretty con controversial stuff for especially considering that my friends watch it <laughs> Yeah, I, I I haven't looked at the comments in in the, some of those videos, <laughs> but I don't suspect your um your your buddies are are, are appreciating that. <laughs> at least not fully. Yeah, it's but it's it's also nice for me just to look back on what was my opinion on this or that and just rewatch videos, not just some some notes I see in a notebook or something like that. It's a full blown video, and I can just think back like, oh, that's how it was back then. Yeah. Last thing, I know we're going off here a little bit. Um, have you heard the name Nicholas Crystal? Nicholas Crystal? No. Nicholas Crystal. He's a he's a he's a German creator. And he does his channel in English, but he's a German creator, and his channel like exploded back in like 2021. Um, I, I would say like within that year, he like went straight to a million subs. Um, 
and his channel's still on there right now. He's a really good content creator, really great filmmaker, German kid. Uh, he moved to South Africa for a while. I don't know where he is now. He took a break from his channel because he's building his, uh, he, he's starting some kind okay. of business and on Instagram or something. Um, but you should check him out, man. You should check him out. Not because yeah, not he's German, but because <laughs> he's a great filmmaker. And the fact yeah. that he was German, it the first thing I thought was you. You're the only person I knew who was doing something um, on YouTube uh, a, as a German speaking English and speaking English quite well, might I add, the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if you get a moment, you can check him out too. He's pretty cool. But that's all I got, man. I was, uh, I'm going <laughs> off with the questions and stuff. Yeah, it was what, do, fun what do you think? Talking to you. This I, is, uh, I really enjoyed this it. is great, man. I like catching up like this. Uh, when I saw your name on, on the uh, message, I was just like, where do I know that from? Because I knew I seen the name before. Um, so I'm glad I'm glad I clicked on it. Glad I approved it. <laughs> and uh, it's been good talking to you, my friend. Yeah, it was it was nice talk, talking to you. It was really interesting to, to get your perspective on, on things because you basically moved in the other direction from North America to Europe. Absolutely. I think I mentioned it in my early video that uh, Germany is might be perfect for you. It's just not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it doesn't sound it like it, it didn't sound like that because I was uh, I was only pointing out the negatives because there are so many videos about Germany and what's good about Germany and I haven't found much about what's bad about Germany. So my Yeah, you know what's you know what I really find negative. funny though is um <laughs> nearly every person that's speaking good is not from Germany. <laughs> right? Yeah. See, you're from Germany so you can uh you have that you 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 have the benefit of being able to yeah, yeah. um say all the negatives and feel proud <laughs> in saying it. For example, if I started saying a lot of the negatives, oh man, <laughs> I get shot down and be like, "Don't you dare talk bad about my country! You can go home." It's like, oh man, come on! Every country's not perfect. Yeah, every country has has uh, flaws. Yeah. So, take care. Thanks for having me again, and enjoy your yeah, day. Thank you. You and too. And we'll talk to you next time, right? Yeah. Talk to you soon. All right. Peace out, brother. Take See care. You then.